Anthony Selden. I'm talking to you today about the fourth education revolution and reimagining the future. And it is going to be about the future. So that seems far in the uh, ahead, but actually the future is already here and the future is already in the past in, in several countries, several educational jurisdictions, and therefore we're playing catch up and uh, COVID has shown us how far behind we are. So this is both futuristic, but it's also the past and it's also what's happened. Uh, we have here uh, the first slide, uh, which is talking about the fact that we are on the complete crest of a wave. Uh, many new technologies are coming through all the time. Uh, AI with poetry, with algo, uh, Apple chips, some um, 100 times quicker than Intel, Waymo cars cars in Arizona, a chicken in Singapore. We've got quantum computing with China's model quicker than Google's and quantum vastly uh, faster uh, than what we know at the moment. Uh, protein structure work by DeepMind, impact on uh, cancers, nuclear fusion, new vaccines. We are on a total crest of a wave of innovation and yet education is way behind. Now, we set up the Institute for the Ethics of AI in Education to try and get ahead of ethics in the 4.0 revolution in a way that we did not in the 3.0 revolution. And um, that is our aim uh, there. Uh, and uh, the next slide is now just coming up. And this is what it consists of. Uh, the fourth revolution consists of artificial intelligence, machine learning, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, transhumanism, and more coming up now. It also consists of, in this great cluster uh, of robotics, it consists of voice and face recognition, quantum computing, as mentioned, collaborative learning, internet of things, and big data, uh, and blockchain, obviously. So this is what's hitting us fast down the road. And, and this is what it looked like there, that picture, there, this comes from a book, uh, my book, Fourth Education Revolution. Uh, the book, the slides are available uh, for everybody. They are there. They had no idea how the uh, internal combustion engine was going to change their world. We have very little idea, particularly education, policymakers, administrators have very little idea how the Fourth Education Revolution is going to change everything. There is that robot uh, opening our eyes. Uh, is it closing our eyes or is it about to gouge our eyes out? Uh, what do we think of, of, of that? Stephen Hawking said it's going to be the best or uh, the worst thing. It's going to change every single aspect of our lives is going to be changed by this. And yet education is dozy and far behind. Elon Musk said it's the biggest risk uh, that civilization, this AI and the fourth education revolution is going to face. Is it going to be a risk? How do we change that risk into the most fantastic opportunity? Well. The fourth, why the fourth? Because five million years ago, roughly, uh, I wasn't there. Uh, we started learning from each other. Then 5,000 years ago, we started learning in the second revolution, organized learning in cities. And the first schools and universities started. And then the third revolution started when we started, um, uh, that's Bologna, the first uh, university in Europe. Uh, and then the third revolution started 500 years ago, 5 million, 5,000, third is 500, with the printing press and the beginning of mass learning. Uh, and there we see in the factory education, look at those happy, eager young boys and girls, desperate for their exciting lessons. We're still living in that model, frankly. Uh, we're still living in that very, uh, very restricted model uh, until, until uh, the fourth revolution uh, occurs. It is the future, as I said, but it's also the present. And it's also the past, and it is breaking on our shores now, and we have to uh, get right ahead of it. It's going to change every aspect, every aspect of teaching and learning is going to be changed uh, uh, by it, every single aspect. Um, and it's going to impact on uh, the way uh, that we, uh, that factory model, uh, every uh, single aspect uh, is going to improve social mobility. Uh, the third model um, didn't. Uh, social mobility is declining in Britain. It's 
bit of impact on um, one size fits all ridiculous uh, that to expect every single student to be progressing at the same pace in every single subject as happened in the factory model. Teachers totally drowned out by administration in that factory model, totally unacceptable. Uh, a very narrow basis about what it means to be intelligent um, um, and society homogenizing uh, everybody. Um, and of course, as you can see, they're very male dominated. Here's a slide I showed now, as you can see on that slide, fully nine years ago in Downing Street, when asked to talk about how this impact of digitalization was going to be changing. The above the line shows how already digitalization was affecting um, the learning, uh, pastoral care, not so much, uh, libraries, exams and tests, obviously every aspect of admin, admin uh, and communications below the line the soft side of education is where it was doing uh, far less. Uh, and um, so we need to uh, just look at that again um, and to see the above the line, the hard side of learning and the soft side. And did they listen nine years ago? Uh, no, is the DfE at the moment full of very good and very worthy people. Uh, and that's the chart I put up for universities from matriculation through to graduation or Already showing that lectures could be as well done online. This even with this was even with the third education technology seminars through MOOCs uh, were, were beginning to improve libraries and research uh, and exams. And again, it was below the line that it was being uh, less uh, well done. That the technology wasn't able to uh, impact on nearly so well. And, and there are five stages in learning: selection of the appropriate material, organisation of that material, presentation of it regular assessment, tests, exams, and feedback, and then uh, evaluation for progress onto the next stage. Every single aspect of uh, teaching and learning at every single level, uh, from nursery up to postdoctoral, will be affected by AI. Now, our schools and universities, I have to say, are preparing students brilliantly. I don't mean to be critical of anybody. They're preparing people brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly, for the 20th century. And today is about smelling the silicon um, the, this whole better bent about smelling the silicon and, and what we can do. Now, the British government does understand, to be fair, it understands the impact of AI on transport, health, industry, uh, but it fails to understand the impact of AI on education and on the jobs that education is preparing our students for uh, and on the skills that our students are going to need to cope in life. In AI, we're talking about, we're talking about what? The way that schools and universities teach and the jobs and the society they go on to. What happens in schools and the jobs, the universities, the society they go, the further education, the society, and that's not happening. And it's not happening and it's not good enough. It simply is not good enough. Why are our schools and universities not doing an even better job? They are doing, obviously, it's full of brilliant, brilliant, working, hardworking people, particularly as we see during COVID, desperate to teach their students. But why are they not doing an even better job? And the answer is this. The answer is because, because we're influenced overwhelmingly and without fully acknowledging it by the past, without fully acknowledging it by the past, not the future. And today I'm pleading with you to, uh, to, to, to smell that silicon and to realise uh, that every aspect of school is changing, every aspect of uh, further higher education is changing. Uh, but also it, it, this is having a massive impact on employment. We're simply no longer preparing people for the jobs of the future. I mean, why? Why is that happening? So AI is already transforming healthcare. Don't we know about that? Transport, shopping, retail, law firms, accountancy, agriculture, banking. But, but, um, you know, why are we not doing a better job preparing people for work? We're preparing people for the skills of the 20th century not for the 21st century. Uh, and all these reports, Oxford Martin, 2013, Harvard, 2015, the Suskins, 2015, McKinsey, 17, IPPR, 17, PwC, 2017. Uh, these reports, report after report, Oxford Martin, Pearson and Nessa, 2018, more recent reports have come through saying that we are not preparing people for the jobs of the future. Two reports, year before last, the OECD, 2019 report, the chartered CIPD report in 2019 uh, again showing that we are not preparing people with the skills that the employment at all level needs tomorrow and then uh, needs for tomorrow. 
And then a world without work, a wonderful book, I'm sure you will have come across it by Daniel Suskind, talks about a society increasingly without jobs, reliant on UBI, universal basic income, university level jobs now in the firing line, yet universities and schools are still concentrating on the skills where machines and algorithms will be superior. I mean, come on, is that good enough? Um, so what jobs um, are we going to need to have in the future? Water, food, entertainment, sport, health, anything to do with care, care for the elderly, care for the young. We need uh, an education system that better uh, prepares people for jobs. And thirdly, I'm talking about the impact. So we're talking about the impact on education, the impact on the jobs we're preparing people for, and on the education. And what, what's society going to look like in 2035? Some say the computing power is going to be a million times more powerful. I don't. Um, if only it's 100 times more powerful, well, just think. There'll be uni ubiquitous, invisible technology. There'll be sensors all over your workplaces and home and in your clothes. Uh, you will all be um, uh, having implants in your body, including molar mics, neural ear, eye implants for those who need them, smart glasses, obviously, contact lenses replacing smartphones, ubiquitous drones in and outside uh, buildings, not just uh, celebrating the new year coming in, health transform for all ages. Society is going to be very different. How is our school with our obsession about GCSEs or not GCSEs, uh, BTECs and A-level? Uh, the third model had a very narrow, mean uh, understanding of what intelligence was. Um, uh, and, and so what kind of futures are we going to have? Well, you know, might there be no schools at all? Uh, could be one model. Uh, and, and intelligence has been so narrowly defined um, um, 100 years ago next year by University of Breslau to find it in a very male, uh, cognitive, left brain way. Uh, it ignored these, these kinds of intelligence. It ignored the full logical intelligence. It, it, it's underplaying linguistic intelligence shamelessly um, and teaching of foreign uh, languages. It's doing very little to develop young people's social intelligence. These, these are intelligences that the uh, boffins at Breslau in 1912 had no truck with. Personal intelligence, the intelligence to know how to live a meaningful and happy life have been ignored by the third uh, education revolution, but will not if we get ahead of the fourth technologies. The moral education, knowing the right from wrong so one can have a, a meaningful life, a spiritual sense of understanding of uh, awe and, and love and wonder, Physical intelligence um, is hardly developed uh, in schools, nor is tragically cultural uh, intelligence. This is the prize, the promise, uh, and we're already we're beginning to see it. Harbingers of the future, out schools um, in the US have done, made some mistakes, but done some really exciting pioneering uh, work, as has here um, uh, Summit Public Schools, which are uh, public schools, um, uh, state schools, uh, uh, which use this new technology and give uh, our every child uh, that personalized education. The School of One um, has done a really pioneering, uh, important work, uh, as has uh, the Khan Lab School. Um, uh, well worth looking up what that had managed to achieve. Uh, River Bend in Chennai, it's not all about America or South America uh, or Finland. And uh, there's extraordinary things happening. Smart schools of the future, COVID being a huge catalyst. Uh, the question is, are we going to revert to the status quo after it? Smart schools, smart uh, universities will use AI extensively. They'll offer a broad curriculum across all the intelligences and prepare people much better for work, blended in home and school because everyone will have access to great technologies. They are going to encourage personalization, not dull conformity. They're going to care for young people's mental health and build up their mental health, not make them think that they're only valid and worthwhile if they pass tests and exams. It will focus on problem solving and on global challenges. Everyone's going to have their personal uh, learning assistant and they're going to be far healthier, greener uh, physical spaces and much more healthy experiences for students as well as staff. Uh, so the conclusion uh, of that is that we need uh, AI machines to teach our students to become uh, more fully human. Um, the education system currently employs humans to teach our students 
to become more like machines. It's incumbent on everybody, um, I would have five conclusions, um, to use COVID, to obviously um, see COVID as primarily an opportunity to ensure that every single child, especially those from the least advantaged backgrounds, has access to great technologies, um, uh, has access to uh, home um, computing equipment, has access to great teaching so we can level up uh, the divides that have become far more apparent. Obviously, we're doing all these things uh, and more, but we also need to uh, recognize uh, that if we let our focus just be on COVID, uh, then we will lose time. We often hear it said, don't we? You'll be hearing it um, uh, all the time at the moment that COVID is enormously accelerated digital. Actually, if it's just accelerated, third um, education technology digital uh, without uh, proper machine learning interactive uh, platforms um, uh, methods of assessment down all those five levels of teaching then I don't think uh, that it's doing nearly uh, enough work uh, uh, the, the new technology is opening out the teaching of, uh, of English uh, the, the, the experimentation in science and technology modeling uh, in the social sciences and geography it is uh, extraordinary, it's there. So that's my first point. Don't let COVID uh, get in the become an excuse. Do what we need to do with COVID, but also have your eyes on the uh, hill over the next one, uh, on the future, the future which is already here, uh, and indeed uh, some other countries, uh, as I've tried to suggest, are already doing it. Uh, secondly, uh, have an understanding that it's not just about what happens inside schools. It's also about the jobs uh, that we're preparing young people for. Uh, that all those studies that I showed up, I don't know what could be more compelling. Uh, the focus in our examination and test regime on uh, cognitive skills is not what um, uh, the uh, world of future employment needs. It needs a more sensitive, interactive, uh, human understanding of, of, of people. The, the, the algorithms will always perform uh, uh, quicker, uh, more reliably, more accurately. They, they won't get tired than human beings, hence the applications the university I ran until uh, three months ago with its medical school. Um, can, you can see the huge impact of uh, the advances there on medical science uh, of diagnostic uh, AI are uh, far more acute than the, 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 the most advanced, brilliant surgeon in the world. We need to work with this uh, material. We need to be preparing people for the jobs, a far more human, a far greener uh, world, a far more interconnected world than the world that we have at the moment. It isn't just about teaching people's left brain uh, and thinking that that's what education is. Thirdly, it's about preparing people for society, including um, the fact that, uh, as we've seen, mental health problems have increased uh, sickeningly uh, uh, throughout um, uh, COVID. They were there already. They've been increasing for uh, 20, uh, 30 years. And an education system that just focuses on the individual uh, and on their cognitive ability without giving the young person a sense of who they are, um, uh, how to uh, be um, happy, how, how the body works, how to uh, live harmoniously, uh, is not doing uh, a nearly good enough uh, job at all. Uh, but, but also the society uh, in which we live, uh, understanding that this is going to be uh, very, very different to the world in which the policymakers grew up um, in the mid late. 20th century. They're the people who are making the rules and making the judgments. Uh, this is not the world of young people. We don't listen to young people uh, nearly enough. Uh, my fourth point uh, is that uh, inevitably uh, with COP26 coming at the end uh, of uh, this uh, year, 2021, that we need to have an education system that is grounded far more in the environment uh, and in nurturing uh, young people to understand uh, that they are part of uh, systems, uh, ecosystems, uh, are th th that uh, animal life, plant life, uh, uh, which will um, 
uh, which they can be part of, which need to be embedded and will be, if we use the fourth education revolution, much more at the very heart uh, of it. And my fifth and final point, uh, rippling through everything that I've said, is that it isn't for other people to do stuff. It's down to you. Whatever you do, schools, you know, schools, teachers, governors, whatever it is that you do, parents, you will make the difference. We need you to get right behind this. Thank you very much. Thank you.